Hi, in this lesson, you will learn a little more about Carol. Let's explore this Carol problem. In order to move Carol to the other side of the wall and onto the tennis ball, Carol will need to move up and then to the right and then down. However, Carol doesn't know a command to turn right. Carol only knows four commands, move, turn left, put ball, and take ball. Therefore, using the four known commands, Carol will need to be commanded to turn left, move, turn left, turn left, turn left, move, turn left, turn left, turn left, and move. To turn rightward, Carol needs to turn to the left three times to achieve the same results. Wouldn't it be nice if Carol knew a command called turn right? Introducing functions. A function is a way to teach Carol a new command. When a function is created, it adds a command to the four commands that Carol already knows. Let's go over how to create a function and teach Carol how to turn right. To create a function, we write the function keyword. After the function keyword, we write the function name. In this case, the function name is turn right. Then we include a pair of parentheses, followed by a pair of curly braces. And between the curly braces, we write a block of commands that will be executed when the turn right command is used. The block of commands between the curly braces is known as the function body. In this case, the function body contains the turn left command three times. Now that Carol knows how to turn right, let's try moving Carol to the other side of the wall. We include the new turn right function in the program so that we can use the turn right command in our code. Therefore, using the five commands, we command Carol to turn left, move, turn right, move, turn right, and then move. Let's head over to the editor and write some code. First, we need to teach Carol how to turn right. So let's start by writing the function keyword and then the function name. Let's call it turn right. Next, we'll add some parentheses and then curly braces. Inside of the curly braces, we'll write our function body. This consists of the commands that Carol performs when the function is called. In this case, we need to use the turn left command three times. Great, now let's put our function to use. We want to build a tower that is three tennis balls high in our second column. First, we need to get Carol in the right position. So let's have her move once, and then since she's building a tower, she needs to be facing upwards. So we'll use the turn left command. Before we run our code, let's place our first ball. Let's run our code now so we can see where we're at. Okay, it's looking good so far, so we can continue writing code and finish building the tower. And then let's run our code one more time. Great, so we're done building our tower. Now let's have Carol go down the right side of the tower. To do this, Carol first needs to be facing to the right. This is where our function comes in. Instead of having to write turn left three times like before, we can simply call the turn right function that we created. All we have to do is write its name. Add some parentheses and then a semicolon. Let's run our code to see if it works. Great, our function works and Carol is now turned to the right. Let's continue moving Carol down the tower. Next, we need to move one space forward and then turn right again. Let's run our code again, but this time we'll step through it so we can see what is happening in more detail. We can step through a program by using the arrows located next to the run button. First, we'll reset the program. Now we're ready to step through it. By following the yellow highlight, we see that our code is running in order from top to bottom. And then we reach our turn right function. When this line of code runs, the yellow highlight jumps back up to our turn right function definition. That's because whenever we call a function, we're really accessing the function's body and then running the code that's inside of it. So in this case, we run three turn left commands. Once the function is done running, 
the program returns to where it left off. We move again and make another call to turn right. Our program jumps back up to our function definition and runs the body again. Okay, now that we've seen how our turn right function works, let's write the rest of the program. Let's run our code. Great, so by creating the turn right function, we can write less lines of code and our program is also easier to read. Now it's your turn to practice writing some code.